And in Galatians it says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Mm -hmm. Those of us that are saved, we are redeemed from our sins. We are His purchased possession. Mm -hmm. Now in verse number 1, look here it says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel. Now I would challenge you, if you're saved, God wants you to be separated unto the gospel. That's right. If you're saved, you know you're going to heaven, now it's your turn to share this free gift and separate yourself from the world so that God can use you to get others saved. In 1 Corinthians 15, he defines the gospel. Don't turn there. I want you to stay with me in certain areas because we've got a lot of Scripture to cover tonight, so I'm going to talk fast, but I'm going to slow down where it's important. I want to be very clear. In 1 Corinthians 15, you probably already know this, but he says that he declares unto us the gospel. He says that this gospel is by which that we are saved, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and He rose again according to the Scriptures. Amen. So being separated unto the gospel is talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ for the redemption of our sins. In Colossians 1, He says, "...in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins." Amen. Hebrews 9, it says, "...but by His own blood..." He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us all. He doesn't have to keep doing it. We don't have to keep doing anything. We obtain that eternal resurrection at the moment that we believe. Now verse number 2, it says, so we believe the gospel, we are redeemed. Now verse number 2, he says, which he hath promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Many prophecies were fulfilled when Jesus came. And some people were looking for this physical kingdom, for physical salvation, and these were spiritual promises. They were saved the same way that we're saved today. In, ver in Romans 1 verse 4, look, he says, "...and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead." So as a soul-winning Christian, how do we get power in our soul-winning life? through the spirit of holiness, through separating yourself for the gospel, through trying to walk in the spirit, in the spirit of holiness, through trying to get the wickedness out of your life. Amen. Verse 5, By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for His name. So we receive this grace because of our obedience. He, the gospel was preached unto us we obeyed it by believing. In 2 Thessalonians, he says, "...in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ." There are people that will disobey the gospel. That means they've rejected it. They will not believe it. Now in verse 6, he says, "...among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ? To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints." Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now when he says called to be saints here, of course saints in the Bible are not a bunch of dead Catholics. Right. Okay, yeah. We are saints. Amen. If you're a believer, you're redeemed, you are a saint Amen. according to the Scriptures. Verse number 8, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Now there's two parts of this verse I love. One is that he's... He's thanking God for your faith. Praying always. We should pray for one another. We should be an encouragement to one another and lift each other up. We're in this battle together. We're out there trying to win souls. Not for our own glory. Not so we can tally up a bunch of numbers. But that we'll have a reward in heaven. That we can take our family and our friends with us. Hey, even strangers, if they would just believe the Gospel. And it says that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Hey, wouldn't it be great if that could be said of this church? That our faith, being steadfast in our faithfulness, could be spoken of throughout the whole world. Amen. Now look at verse 9. It says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of His Son, that without ceasing I may mention of you always in my prayers. Again, he's talking about, I'm praying for you that you would be fruitful. In verse 10 he says, Making request. Here's his prayer. If by any means, now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God, to come unto you. Now when he says a prosperous journey, is he talking about wealth? No. You think he wants to leave with a full money bag? No. He's talking about growth, not wealth. And by growth, he's saying, I want to see you become a better Christian, and I want to see more people 
become Christians. Amen. And that's the concept of prosperity. Look at the next verse. For I long to see you, that I might impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye may be established. Now if you're unsaved, that gift is going to be salvation. But if you're saved, the idea is that you lift your brother up. You teach your brother. That's why I love going soul winning with other people. Amen. is because if they're new, or if they're, they're weathered, I can probably learn something from them. If we're walking in the Spirit, if we're, if we're striving for the same goal, maybe you'll pick up on something. And that's kind of the goal there, is that we can help others by giving them spiritual gifts that God has given us. Amen. Verse 12, That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of me and you. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hither too. That I might have some fruit among you, even as among other Gentiles. So there he's clearly saying, I want fruit among you. Now we know the word fruit in the Bible is used in many, many different ways. It can, it can be talking about your children. That's a great thing. It can be talking about your words. We shall know them by their fruit. What they're saying is how we judge a false prophet. It, it can be talking about your thoughts. It can be talking about the reward for your works. Here it's talking about saving converts. It's about getting other people saved. And spiritual gifts will increase as we walk in the Spirit. And that's another mention of fruit in the Bible. Amen. So here he's talking about having fruit among you. I want to see your fruit abound. And that fruit, in Matthew 13 he says, But he that receives seed into the ground, into the good ground, is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some in hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Amen. And I, I believe that this is getting more people saved. Right. Yeah. You might be a 30 person per year soul winner. You might be a 60. You might be a 100 per year. Who knows? Maybe it's just one. If it's just one, praise the Lord. Amen. But I believe this is the fruit that this is talking about, that we should reproduce ourselves. Hey, you know, a good apple will reproduce itself. If it's genetically modified, hey, all bets are off, right? Yeah. <laughs> that wicked fruit, that evil fruit. Right. All right. <laughs> Look at verse 14. It says, I am debtor both to the Greeks and the barbarians both to the wise and the unwise. Hey, you owe it to people to preach to them. Even if they're a different race, even if they, they, they're not as smart as you, right? Even if you're not as smart as them, if they're outsmarting you, that's okay. You have the Gospel. Right. You're more wise than they are truly spiritually wisdom. Right. Verse 15, he says, So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the Gospel to you that are at Rome also. Here Paul saying he's writing to him and he's hey, I'm coming, I'm, I'm ready to preach too. I want to get in there and fight with you guys. Right. You know, in 1 Peter 3 it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Right. We should always be ready to preach the gospel, no matter where we're at. We should always be ready to give an answer to people why we believe in God, why we trust in Him, why we stand on His Word. Yeah. And that's what Paul's teaching here. That's, this is the fundamentals of what he's saying. And in the next verse he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, I believe this verse summarizes everything we've just read. This verse, you, it wraps up this first half where he's saying, I'm not ashamed of the Gospel. Even if it's going to cost me something, I'm going to preach it. You know, in, in Matthew 18, it says, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. There are many people that will not humble themselves right. and listen to the Gospel. That's right. That's right. Yeah. A lot of times I thank the person, thank you for being humble enough to listening. And when I told, when I tell, because you tell them they're wrong in your soul presentation, well, that'll, you know, I'm sorry, but the Bible says something different. Can I show you what it says? They have to acknowledge right then and there, I'm wrong. This guy has something else to show me. I, if they believe the Bible's right, this is their opportunity. So you have to really humble yourself to receive the Gospel. That's right. Amen. Verse 17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So in the Gospel is how it's revealed. From faith to faith. From me to you. From you to the people that get saved. This is how the righteousness of God is revealed. Through our faith, we share that faith with somebody else. You know, and people use that phrase sometimes, I want to share my faith with you. And that's kind of a cheesy way 
of saying, I want to try to get you saved. And most people that use that may not really be a soul winner, but there is a little bit of truth in it. Right. Hey, I've got some faith, and I want to share it with you. I want you to take it with you. I want you to make it your own. 